Hello, everybody. I, I, it's the first time I've been here for a couple of months, but I have been reading the uh, the, the bulletins coming out. Um, in case you hadn't noticed, the PFC has launched a fundraising campaign to raise £50,000 for the Hartlepool Carers to buy the Carers a static uh, re uh, uh, respite caravan. Uh, and we've done remarkably well within the first month or so. We've probably raised, although we can't accurately predict exactly how much, but in the region of between fifteen and 20,000 so far which is just brilliant. And I know mm -hmm. some of you may well already be on board. Um, the campaign is, is sort of titled You Change Lives 25, based on the fact that um, the average young carer spends at least 25 hours a week looking after their loved one or ones. Uh, and for the adult carers, that's a lot more. It's probably, you know, in the region of 90, 80, 90 hours a week. But in any event, that's the, that's the tag, 25, and we're running sponsored uh, events uh, for those willing to take part based on 25, the figure 25. So if anybody wants to do 25 miles a day run, which is nearly a marathon a day, no, or 2.5 miles a day over 10 days, or, or, or like I'm doing, we've got the... the, the, the uh, the uh, big town tidy up. Uh, I don't know if, any, if you're on Facebook, you know it's gone a little bit mad. Uh, everybody uh, picking bags now. Uh, and so we're getting sponsored for picking 25 bags in a month or something like that. And it's starting to gather momentum. And we'd like to keep that momentum going. Um, and we'd really welcome anybody on board and any ideas. And you can um, join up or get more information by simply emailing you change lives at the pfc.org uh, to speak to Carl Jorgensen or uh, Kelly Adamson and they will provide you <coughs> more information if you're interested but um, I'm here to answer any questions if, 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 if anybody's got any or if they want to uh, PM me personal message me I can I can answer them um, individually but it's really it's, it's really it's one of those things, if I can just explain, this is, this is Francis Connolly waking up um, on sort of on the 4th of January and saying, right, we're going to hit the ground running. I've, got, I've decided to go slimming. I've already got £10,000 worth of sponsorship. Everybody else, catch up with us now. <laughs> and so we're off and running. Um, so that, was, that was on, started officially on the 8th of January. So it's, uh, it's really motoring along, it's capturing a lot of attention, and I'm hoping that, you know, we're trying to get the community involved, because so, uh, it's really the community that we're all about. Um, so that is my piece for today. So, morning everyone, um, I'm Michael Slims, I'm representing two organisations this morning, just for a quick update. Um, so, I'm part of an organisation called Incontrollable, and we're a disabled people's user-led organisation based in Hartlepool. Um, the main services that we run at the moment are Project 65, which is a tablet loan service. So um, we loan Android tablets to any Hartlepool resident aged 65 or over. Um, it is a reduced service uh, because of the circumstances, but we do have tablets available um, to loan out. So it's to any Hartlepool resident aged 65 or over. Um, we also manage the Hartlepool Advocacy Hub. So uh, throughout the pandemic, we continue to uh, facilitate that service to ensure that people receive timely and uh, professional advocacy support when, uh, when needed. Um, we write a blog for the uh, Hartlepool Now website. Uh, the blog's called Don't Quack Like a Duck, Saw Like an Eagle. And it was uh, went out yesterday. And I'm, I think I've sent you our copy this morning, Judy. So if you get 10 minutes during the day, that will be good. Um, and we're involved in lots of other things in the background, promoting um, the barriers that are faced by disabled people in Hartlepool. So we do lots of other work, but our main services are the ones I've spoken about. Very quickly, with my other hat on, I'm also a member of an organisation called Blue Rose Thinking, and we run um, a community-based choir for people with, who may have support needs or for people who may not have joined a choir 
unfortunately due to circumstances the, the choir is on hold and we also plan to launch another choir in April last year called um, Hear My Voice which was particularly for, for males in Hartlepool and it was around suicide prevention. We've had a meeting with the funders um, and we're hoping that they're going to extend um, the, the startup of the choir, give us a bit longer because of um, obviously the vaccine programs in place. And we're just hoping and hoping that we can get this choir launched. So um, yeah, fingers crossed that we'll be launching um, the Hear My Voice Choir, hopefully in the spring. Um, so yeah, that's me, that's us. If anybody's any questions, I'm happy to answer and I'll put my contact details um, on the chat. Thank you. Hi, yeah, I'm Darren, I'm the communications worker for Hartlepool Action Lab. Um, there's a few new faces, so hiya, if I haven't met. A um, couple of things to share. The, the, the first one is that we've got a new um, member joining the team um, that we're interviewing for it soon. The, 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 all the, the closing dates have passed and stuff, so it's so they're just doing the interviews. I think it's tomorrow for a community cohesion worker as part of our Stronger Neighbourhoods work that we've been doing in, in the Oxford Road area, between Oxford Road and Cornwall Street and the Ladder Street in between. So it's funded by the Office of the Police and Crime Commissioner via Cleveland Police, but the post is hosted by Joseph Roundtree. So it's going to be a 12-month post, but it gives us that sort of dedicated boots-on-the-ground person to be able to start you know, tying that community together and, and highlighting how much of a community is actually there. You know, the, 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 the journey that we've been on from start to finish in that area has been magnificent from, from our first sort of, you know, soiree at the place where people said there's no community there. It's all, you know, drug addicts and people who commit crime. It's really not. That's a, that's a minority of what's there. And hopefully this worker can help us to sort of shine a light on, on how brilliant that community is and just get people out and, and start getting people more involved in, in, in community um, and, and yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, the other thing is we're, we're developing a, a looking to develop a shared language. Um, so there's a meeting on the on Thursday, the 11th of February, one to three. Um, so if anyone hasn't received an invite to that and wants to be a part of that, what we're doing is pulling as many people as we can together who either you know have uh, outward facing role with regards to comms. I just want to be part of the conversation so that we can start tying our messages together because there's still a lot of um oh sorry Robin it's in in the Cornwall Street and Cornwall Street and Oxford Road is the community cohesion worker um yeah so we're looking to get all our messages so they're more consistent um so you'll have probably seen that you know Marcus Rashford talking about uh, food poverty and his task force and stuff like that and they've started to use um words like like people in need and, and the needy and that's starting to become like in the in the vernacular of the media and stuff which is it's not good and um, so you were going to look to try and get sort of um a shared message for Hartlepool so we can really start working towards finding justice for people and solving the issue that is poverty you know if if we're talking about poverty in Hartlepool there's there's people all over it will turn away from it purely because they've built up a resilience to you know, the different sort of aspects of poverty so if we if we're talking about food poverty you know someone living in poverty might say well you know my kids are fed and i'm fed so I, that, that doesn't apply to me but when you look at the bigger picture yeah the, the children might be fed and they might be able to, to feed themselves but they 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 probably lacking in opportunities they, they, there's all sorts of different aspects of poverty as a whole and i think the more we can get our messaging joined up together and start saying the same things and appealing to the same people and not marginalizing people by using language such as you know feeding the needy and, and that type of stuff. Um, the, the better we can sort of start breaking down the walls of that resilience and get people talking about poverty and really start making a move into getting some real evidence as to the impact of, of what people are going through. You know, it's, it's real, it's here today. Now you might not believe it, but there's, you know, there's, there, is there is children that are going hungry. There is parents that are skipping meals. There's parents who can't afford to heat their home and feed their kids at the same time. It's here now. And, and the more that we sort of fragment our messaging and fragment our energies, the less chance we have of reaching those people and, and, and getting justice for them and giving them that dignified way of life that everybody deserves. So if anyone wants to be a part of that, um, if you want to just drop us a, drop an email, my email's in the chat. If, I, if you haven't already received the invite, 
um, and that'll be Thursday the 11th, uh, one or three. It's not going to be a, it's not going to be sort of the definitive end of the line. No, we we'll get have everything drawn out there and then. But it's just it's just a commitment for us all to start thinking about the messages that we put out and the way that we say them. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, I've been working with um, Julie, and just as Michael was saying about Hartlepool now, we're, we're, we're trying to to work towards using Hartlepool now as a more centralised communication tool so that we can all start sharing information better. Because um, there's there's been a couple of examples of where, say, there was a pot of funding and what we've got is the separate groups in the town all trying to achieve good things for the communities. But we all end up almost competing for the same funding because, because that communication isn't there. So I think if we can develop that central communication and have it so it's just something that we all do as part of our daily routines, you know, you can just log in for, for five, ten minutes but what you're doing, where you're applying, what your projects are doing, you know, any news, any updates, any partnerships that are developing, um, it'll give us a better idea as to, you know, the scope of what our actual network is. And then it'll also help us to identify sort of, you know, blind spots that we haven't got and, and really start spreading our energies better rather than sort of running in, in different lanes. We can start, you know, working together better. I mean, it's been great to see the collaboration that this kind of thing's built up um, but there's different sort of groups that are developing around the town, which is needed. They're, they're, they're addressing sort of real issues for the people of Hartlepool. But it would just be great if we had that centralised communication place where everybody sort of committed to spending five minutes a day, just so we all, we're all more aware of what it is that we're doing, sort of the little things that we can sort of, you know, help to, to, to build and grow together. Oh, good morning. I'm new to this. So uh, I had realized Hartley Power was a power of this wonderful good intentions and good work and coordination and so on, not just electricity and so on. So uh, I have a little company which I like to think of as a private social enterprise called the Mandelbrot Club. That was my wife and myself and we do paintings, we do cards, we do maths tuition, we do English teaching and things like that. We also employ a, a Russian refugee uh, who's a qualified in her own country and we, um, we, we farm her out to various organizations that need their books doing. She's uh, and mostly a Quaker, uh, others as well. Um, so that's uh, my little company. Um, we're hoping to take on Alex, if I can introduce Alex, who's uh, in the screen here, Alexander Greenwood. Um, Alex has joined me recently in um, uh, supporting and um, helping to build up the Northern Cross newspaper, which has been going for many years and covers from Berwick to Bellingham to Barnard's Castle. It's the Roman Catholic newspaper for the North. And of course, it's struggled because sales in the back of churches have fallen flat. So Alex has been working with me and a small team to um, build up sales. And we've got nearly 300 subscriptions now when we had none before, all sales at the back of churches. Um, and um, he's very IT literate. Um, he's from English Martyrs School. He's 20, if I don't mind me saying all this, Alex. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, and um, uh, so what we're particularly looking at, and why we're interested in this, is that um, um, we would look, we're trying to get a kickstart grant through a gateway, um, if that makes sense, uh, for six months employment of Alex for 25 hours a week. And our particular thing is to deliver the Northern Cross digitally to a Kindle rather than a tablet. Some people are phased, my mother, for example, is 94, can use a Kindle, but not a tablet. Uh, we bought an iPad, it was a waste of time. Uh, but the Kindle uh, is the right sort of thing. So we need to reconfigure something that's been published in a newspaper, using something like Quiet Express and so on, into a format that's easy to read uh, on a Kindle, as you would on a Kindle. And that's really our main thing. Somebody else came in yesterday, the guy, who, an old friend of mine, who's um, apparently the lifelong president of the UK Men's Shed Association. He brought the Men's Shed into the, uh, into the UK. Um, but he was talking about something I thought about before, and that's to have a very simple, easy video link you can stick on top of your telly. So again, you don't need fancy computing and so on. 
just a few easy buttons, call my son, click, and the video then comes up whether it uses Zoom or anything else. So that's a, a couple of the little projects uh, Alex and I are working on together through my, what I call private social enterprise little company. It's a little normal commercial company with a small turnover. Uh, and uh, with one employee, who's a, a Russian refugee lass. Um, and um, uh, that's it really, that, that's us, uh, that's, we're working hard and um, we hope to employ Alex. Um, and uh, if anyone has any ideas, I'd like to um, share them with you. So thank you for inviting us to this. Thanks for coming, Michael. And I hope that people can see some of the connection and why Michael's came here today. We're thinking about people who are potentially digitally isolated, especially like obviously with where we concentrate on Hartlepool, but there will be further afield and older people as well. And the, I know there's a lot of people in this virtual room that have a lot of experience around um, mm -hmm. tackling digital isolation and how to sort of bring this person, like these people's sort of way of comfort, their enjoyment of reading sort of what's going on in the world through this magazine and through sort of contact with one another. Um, I think what you mentioned there was potentially Facebook portal, Michael, that's a, such a thing. That thing that you add on top of your telly and talk to other people is currently being tried now with elderly people via Hattie Bulborough Council. Hello everyone, so my name's Roz, um, I work in five of the surgeries in Hartlepool and what we're doing is over the phone just providing emotional and practical support for people um, with us being in lockdown, not being able to get out and do what we normally do, uh, which would be normally helping people if they're feeling isolated, if they've got housing problems, if they've got financial problems, um, anything to improve anyone's health and wellbeing. And if we don't know um, how to help ourselves, but then we try and post to people like yourselves. And that's how we have brought it in a nutshell, really. Um, obviously, um, my colleague Robin here is with us as well, which he's probably tell you a little bit more about things. But we do like walking groups and things like that. But everything, as you know, will be on hold at the moment. So can't wait for lockdown to be finished to uh, get our role up and running again. Thank you very much, Ros. And can I just add in that Ros has been taking part in our, um, our Poolies Together event last week. And every day at 12 p.m., she put on some absolutely brilliant sort of uh, exercises. Um, there was uh, giving yourself a nice head, head massage. That was yeah. too. crazy hula hoop and fancy dress exercises. And it was a fest for her as well. She, she'd never done anything like that before. And she was absolutely brilliant at it. So well done. And thanks very much for getting involved in that, Ros. I really appreciate it. And I think everyone did in your own networks as well. So there's not just me yeah. that feeling. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pass on to, to Robin now as part of, as, as Ros and Robin work together. Hi, yeah, I'm Robin, another social prescribing link worker working in uh, the GP surgeries in Hartlepool. Um, just to expand on the description of our role for those that don't know, um, we're working as a link between uh, GP practices, patients and the community looking at the wider determinants of what is affecting somebody's mental health and well-being and physical well-being. Um, over the last 10 months, 11 months now, um, we've been helping out with emotional support over the telephone, um, helping to promote the COVID vaccine, um, as well as trying to offer practical support when we were allowed doing one-to-one -one walking groups, um, visits and things like that. Um, it's been challenging um, and we're really keen to get things back to how they were. Um, just a few updates from our team. Uh, we're really now starting to get our social media presence together. I've had a meeting with the comms person for Hartlepool and Stockton Health who employ us on behalf of the GP surgeries. So that's in the pipeline um, and keep your eyes peeled. Um, and just a little bit of a message on behalf of Cleveland Fire Brigade Befriending Service. They're really struggling for volunteers at the moment. They've got a, a big waiting list. Um, we tend to refer quite a lot of patients there. Um, befriending and they're really struggling so if anybody is aware of anybody who might possibly like to volunteer then can they get in touch with Cleveland Fire Brigade 
Um, and yeah, that's it from our team for now. Um, it's my first time being involved with this. Um, don't know why I haven't done it before. Sometimes time just takes away with you. So anyway, no excuses. Um, the company I have is a kick. It's called Something Positive Solutions. And my partner and I, Sandra, decided that we needed to do something a little bit different for people that covers the mental health and the well-being rather than just going on a course to get a, a job. So we've come up with a confidence course. We've written the course ourselves. It's all, um, all about the person. So it's holistic. It's um, involved in that is counseling. Also, there will be mindfulness and hypnotherapy done on a one-to-one -one or in group sessions. So the confidence part of it is to get people to move to the next step. So if they want a job or if they want to go into training or if they want to go into uh, voluntary work, they will come onto the course. We have funding from Hartlepool Borough Council, ESF funding. Uh, as soon as the kids go back to school, we can start our course. They come onto the course and it'll be all about them and what we can do for them holistically, not just bums on seats, maths and English, do this and on a churn and wheel. Um, it has to be a little bit more softly, softly with people. So that's it in a nutshell, but obviously it's a little bit more involved than that. People will, we will do things that they've never done before, like put them out of the comfort zone a little bit, let them do something a little bit different, go somewhere where they've never been before. Um, we have some good links, um, got through the hub, you know, people, it's such a vast uh, wealth of knowledge everybody has on this forum and in the hub that it's sometimes a lot to take in but we have some good links with harbour uh, wellness for women and just talking about walking groups because i work closely with wellness for women because they're a charity they're still allowed to walk in groups of up to 15 so if anybody wants to um go along to wellness for women they have started a walking group up um so that's what we do we um, we just wanted to do something a little bit different for people. I've worked in training for 35 years. I know I don't look old enough to be in training for 35 years, but no, all joking aside, I, I've been in training for 35 years, recruiting for training providers, and I just wanted to do something for the community to give a little bit back. I intend to get involved more um, within the community myself, um, but we've been doing funding as Julian knows we novices at that so he's given us some really good advice and information so he shined a light on, he shone a light on everything <laughs> um so I'm really looking forward to our course starting our first course is full we've decided to do um ladies and gents separately just so that you know sometimes and I'm not being sexist Men are a little bit, oh, mindfulness, oh, hypnotherapy. Maybe they're not open to that. But uh, so that's why we decided to do men and women separately so that um, they don't feel uncomfortable if there's a woman around or the men don't feel uncomfortable, the women don't, vice versa. So that's what we've decided to do. Our, our men's course, um, I think, is pretty full as well because we went along to Minds for Men. And we did um, a presentation about the company and everybody was interested in coming on because it is unique, isn't it, Julian? <laughs> that, those were Julian's word. Your course is unique. So, so I'm really excited for us to start. Hopefully when the kids go back, we want to start the week after our course. Um, and looking for other funding because I don't want to just be tied to ESF funding. I want to have a broader spectrum of funding so that we can do different things and we're not tied just to outcomes because holistically our everybody's mental health is suffering so we need to do more within the community and uh, I mean I've only been on maybe this, this morning and listening to other people yeah I need to get more inv involved with everything um, so that's what I intend to do from this Thank you. I won't keep you any longer. Thanks very much, Kathy. That's that's lovely and lovely to hear. And I'm glad that you've enjoyed 
sort of hearing hearing other people's experience and things this morning. I look forward to you coming to to wherever, yeah, future meetings and hearing about um, how your training courses is doing and your future plans. Thanks very much oh, for coming. Can I just say one more thing? Yes. <laughs> well, Sandra and I went on a, on a course for first aid for mental health. So when they come on the course, they will be getting um, a certificate first aid, first aid mental health. So... Morning, everyone. Thank you for having me again. It's been really helpful just hearing other people's stories. So, yeah, my name's Andrew Poynin, and I'm the integration and participation worker for Couth. So, Couth is an online and mental health wellbeing service for young people aged 11 to 18 in the Hartlepool area. So, that's the month of the 11th birthday, all the way up until the day before the 19th birthday. So, we offer a wide range of support. It's all online, it's all free, safe and anonymous. We work with local kind of organisations and we work in partnerships. So it's great, you know, to hear some of the other organisations that do stuff with young people. I can offer presentations. So that can be to young people at schools or colleges, or if there's any kind of youth groups out there. Again, we're doing a lot of recording. So I'm doing a lot of myself recording that can be played into the bubbles. I know there's a teacher out there. So please, please email me. Also, um, I can do presentations to staff teams I can come and jump on and do a presentation to give you just a little bit of flavor what Couth is and how you can signpost your young person over also GPs we can offer kind of um presentations to GPs so I'll, again the social prescribers I'd be keen to link in and get some email addresses and link in with yourselves as well so yeah that's pretty much Couth in a nutshell we like as I mentioned we offer kind of chat based services which is counselling again it's all online all anonymous we've got some well-being activities that young people can take part in we've got peer-to-peer -peer support via online Couth forums again everything's safe the young people are all safeguarded we've just launched a really exciting initiative as a well new campaign so in line with them um, young persons mental health week we've just uh, launched a campaign called don't do it alone so what i'll do is i'll put the youtube video in there we've launched it with some really kind of really key up and coming influencers as well so you might know some of them if you're into your rap and your hip hop and stuff there's a couple on there and um the feedback from the young people is that it's really relevant and it's really really funny and it's just encouraging young people to chat it's a bit daft it's a bit silly um i'll put that on there our video and there's a launching hub as well so if you go on the explorecouth.com there's loads of information for social media or if you want further information again please send that over and i think that's everything <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew. I was at a um, I was at a governor's meeting um, with 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 the school that I'm, I'm part of the board at last week at Stranton School, and I mentioned that they had been sort of working with Couth kind of pre lockdown, and they hope to sort of re engage with that and get some of their older children involved, sort of over eleven. But they did also mention about your support for for teachers and staff as well, which has a different name and I forget that. Could you give us a little overview of that? Because I think that would be maybe sort of really useful because we know that, you know, sort of the stress is there as well. Yeah, so yeah, you just remind me of there when we finished talking, I was like, oh, I was meant to mention, meant to mention Quell as well. So yeah, so Quell is our uh, teaching service. So that's been going live in Hartlepool and Stockton. So that's available for teachers teaching staff, support staff, college staff as well. And we've actually rolled that out recently to um, all of County Durham and other parts of the Tees Valley area. So I'm from Darlington. I've got quite a lot of friends who, who teach in the Darlington area. So it's really great that they've got that support as well. And also with the primary schools, like you mentioned, we can work with the, the year sixes. So the, the younger ones who might be within our age bracket. And again, I'm going to be looking at that sort of Again, if you've got any contacts, if you know of any schools, if you've got any friends who are teachers, I know loads of my friends have been, I've been I wish I was on commission, I've been signposting them over. So that's uh, quell.io. So um, again, it's very similar to the to the um, young person's one, but obviously it's just age appropriate for the, the adults. And again, all of our content on, on, on Couth is age appropriate. So what an 11 year old would see isn't the same as the 18 year old and the younger ones would have more of a, um, would have more of a um, youth work kind of style rather than counseling. 
But yeah, we I'm into a couple of schools in Hartlepool, but I'm just trying to get I've sent some recordings to Dyke House, so um hopefully I'm gonna get a couple more schools on board. But obviously it's quite difficult to 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 get to schools. So if you have any key names, contacts, go on so Julie. I hope no, I was just agreeing there, Andrew. I hope so, because like I know that Dyke House kind of have those free lessons, such as your life. Is it not your life's lesson, your learning guide period and your PE that they currently don't do anything with? And I, I, although I don't want children to be sat in front of a screen for like a million hours a day, such as they are, if like on occasion they could put something in there around kids' well being and that sort of thing, then then that wouldn't be a wasted opportunity, wouldn't it? Because those kids need to be there anyway. They'll see that resource. They might not need it at that time. They might be feeling good at that time. But then if it's stuck in the head, or coast there or whatever the other services then maybe as if they are feeling low and, and you know they want to access something remotely that'll be the thing that pops up sort of at a late point so i'm glad that you're, you're reaching out to, to other schools andrew yeah. thanks very yeah. much for, for coming well, along just quickly it. that new campaign it's got social and um, it's got it's got session plans with it as well so you know schools or over you group youth groups or whoever you know you can use them and again it's just having those conversations so yeah please do check them out The emailed version. Um, I'm Finola Andalik. I'm based in Hartlepool. I'm from Hartlepool. Uh, I'm a registered nutritionist and a trustee at Hartlepool Food Bank. So my friend and I have set. She's a personal trainer. We've set up, or in the process of setting up, um, a company uh, supporting kind of underserved communities. So definitely Hartlepool falls under that barrier, but also private work, looking at um, nutritional literacy, improving health and well-being um, among all sort of socioeconomic backgrounds so that's what we're doing currently um setting that up and then i also do private work on the side that helps fund the more social side <laughs> um that's it really i can attach our email it's called all in with joe and finn um that's everything you know, look, give just give us a little idea of how that combination of a nutritionist and an exercise coach might work together or even a story of of someone with whom you've worked and and how that because it seems to me a really exciting combination and also delivering that under the auspices of a of a of a, of a company that exists for social benefit i mean i'm not aware that there's anything else quite the same as that so i'm just interested that you know, make sure everyone really gets a clear picture of what you're doing and what you're about. Um, well, we're still sort of establishing how to best reach people. Um, so kind of my connection to the food bank, we're looking at um, whether we start by, um, I did a lot of research with the food bank as part of my dissertation and it looked at people's attitudes towards food. So it was whether do we start by kind of providing the big, well, I'll start again. The main thing was education. So it was like, do we start by adding menus to recipes, menus and recipes to food parcels to help people cook better food or to learn more about food. Do we include um, video sessions for people, bearing in mind that takes up bandwidth and then do they have access to the right technology or do we include packs so they can do home workouts and if they have limited space, um, I'm not probably not make myself very clear. It's kind of looking at people and what they have available and then trying to figure out how to best serve people and how to best um, I don't know, sort of improve health and fitness levels and also educate people and then make sure people know it's accessible to them and it's not some weird, um, unobtainable middle class, um, I don't know, looking after yourself is more of a, a middle class ideology rather than anyone can achieve it, nothing, you know. If you want to eat quinoa, you can eat quinoa. It's not out of your grasp, but that sort of thing. I didn't even know it was pronounced that way, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel I feel knowledgeable already. But just as an example, I think, as me and me, Finn and Jill have had a conversation via Friends of Stranton, which is a charity um, I'm part of of the opportunity that we might be able to give the, the parents to go to Stranton School because we do a fair share once a week. And we're like, well, what can we do with our fair share? Maybe we can give Finn and Jill, the, the delivery list sort of thing of what we've got in that week. And they can look at that and maybe 
be inventive about what that could possibly create. So a typical week's fair share, something like that. But then also working with, um, like we hope to be able to work with a group of parents and thinking about nutrition in just a really sort of informal way, I suppose, to bring, because we, we like sort of Finn and Jill's approach that they're like the dead positive and things like that. And we think that that would really complement um, the, the parents that were kind of in, in, our, in our group. So hopefully that's kind of. Thank you, Jill, that's much smoother. That's much better, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so basically food and physical movement are so integral to well-being and you're incredibly flexible in how you introduce those ideas, you increase learning about them and appreciation of and motivation to get involved in those and to use them consciously. Hi, my name's Tracy. I work for Hartlepool United Community Sports Foundation and the social action leader for Pools Perishables. Um, Pools Perishables, we started through about November last year, so obviously as we were in the second lockdown. Um, ideally what it was going to be, it's a, a perishables food bank with clothing, baby items and um, trying to deal with the period poverty within the town um, of women's sanitary products. Um, the idea was we were going to have people come. It was going to be where you can have a coffee and a chat and we can start looking at what help people need. Obviously, COVID had a bit of a different spin on that. So now we've had to change it slightly where we do appointments. Um, so people come down to the ground, they get the food they need. We have clothes that are available and we're just starting to get to really know all these people and kind of, I think... Although COVID's put that barrier in the sense of we're not necessarily getting people in to speak to them face to face. We're starting to learn about them and we know where we can potentially look at where we can help them. But it's took off really well. We have done some delivery services as well to people who have been isolating, um, you know, families um, that are really struggling in the town at the minute. Um, and yeah, it's it, we're open on a Monday. Um, we're kind of trying to work out our times. We have been a bit later. This week we tried between one and three um, and that worked really well. And we just allocate people times and they come in and have a bit of a chat with us and go. For Hello, good morning, everyone. Morning, when? Hey, thank you. Nice to meet you here. Uh, I'm a chairman of the Halipo Chinese Association. Uh, we are very lucky to have uh, European funding to offer the Chinese training class. Um, uh, because the COVID-19, so we uh, moved to the uh, online training, um, just say uh, about eight people in the class. Um, after cooking, obviously in the cooking, and the, the attendee can go to get the food or maybe we can deliver to see how nice the food is. Um, then we have uh, um, funding from the uh, Duran Community uh, Foundation and they uh, encourage us to do the gardening because Chinese uh, uh, community, they have uh, some gardening skill, dancing skill and cooking skill to offer to the uh, communities. So, I, I would like to use their skill to offer them the uh, employment opportunity. Also, integrate um, and networking with other groups. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Haripu Power, to connect us together. And um, if you need to get on the class and in. Morning. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, Sarah from Hartlepool Carers, uh, what we do is we are a charity that support unpaid carers, so it's people who are caring for a loved one, family member, friend, neighbour, whoever. Um, a lot of people don't re uh, realise that they are classed as a carer because they think that's just what I have to do for my husband, my child, my mum, who, whatever. But as long as you're doing up to at least an hour a week, then they can actually be classed as a carer and that can include doing their shopping for them, 
um, handling their bills, obviously doing the housework for them, helping them with medication, bathing, that sort of thing. We have seen the amount of registrations increase a lot over COVID because obviously everyone's care role has increased in some way or other, especially if people are shielding or isolating. So if you've got anyone who you work with who um, you think might be classed as a carer, they can register online on our website. It's just a, a link on our webpage. You just fill out the details, that's it. And then we'll get in touch with them and take it from there. Um, our big thing at the moment is we are working with the P, let me get the initials the right way around, PFC Trust um, on our UC25 challenge. Um, this is all about raising £50,000 to get a caravan for respite for our young carers. Um, so we've picked the number 25 because that's what on the average young carer spends a week caring on top of obviously their school work and things like that. It's 25 hours a week. Um, so we're trying to raise funds for the caravan all based around the number 25. Um, if you've got anyone who might like to be involved, pick a challenge you can do so. We are doing a 25 hour exercise relay on the weekend of the 27th, 28th of February. So for 25 hours at one point or other, someone will be moving constantly for an hour, uh, which is gonna be interesting. We've got a couple of slots left if anyone would like to be involved in that. I am so far managed to rope myself into doing an hour of seated exercise, an hour run dressed as superwoman around the streets of Hartlepool, and an hour hula hoop challenge so i'm going to be shattered by the end of this um but if anyone would like to get involved in that they can do and also we are looking for people to sponsor our slots as well which is 25 pound for an hour which we didn't think was too bad so if anyone would like to get to get involved in that too uh just get in touch with me um we're still running all of our activities over zoom at the moment for carers we've got young carer activities for five to 16 year olds. We've got our young adult carers, which is 18 to 25. We've got our adult carers. We've got ex-carer groups for people who've lost a loved one. Um, we've got a male carer specific group. We've got all sorts. So anyone who you think might benefit, please send them our way. Oh, I've been signed out. You still here? You still, still here. Still here. Oh, yeah, God. Still here. <laughs> I've just had a message come up saying you've been signed out. And I got really no, no. You. We wouldn't do we wouldn't do that to Sarah. <laughs> Am I waffling on too much? No, you weren't. This is this is revenge. Look, you are on the other side of the screen. No, <laughs> you're absolutely brilliant. And um, oh, sorry, that was the other thing I was going to say. Talking Tuesdays, <laughs> please, please, please. Julie came on with me last week, and it was brilliant. What I was talking Tuesday is yep. it's a bit like this. And it's an interview we film with VCS groups in the town talking about the amazing stuff you're doing. We don't record it live. It's very informal. It's just a bit chat. It goes out on a Tuesday. It's about 15 minutes long. You can talk about all the amazing stuff you're doing. It goes on our Facebook, it goes on our YouTube page, our Twitter, our website, everywhere. So if anyone would like to be involved in that, I'm looking for people to come on and talk about the stuff you're doing. So please give me a shout. I would highly recommend it. Um, as I said, it was really sort of really a comfortable experience. I didn't feel nervous in any way. And, and Sarah is an absolutely great host. And I've seen the snippets of the, of the sponsored things that you're going to do. And like, they look amazing. Basically, I've seen the, the hula hoop challenge. I don't think Chris said that she doesn't know how to do a hula hoop yet. So um, yeah, she's bought one and she texted me the other day. She was like, I'm not going to be able to do this for an hour. Not a chance. But we're doing that at three o'clock in the morning, the hula hoop challenge. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> that's, that's, that's brilliant. So people like Michael, Violet, Kathy, Roz, Michael, Andrew, Darren, Michelle, Alex, uh, Wen... Uh, Sarah would all be brilliant for Talking Tuesdays. Yeah, definitely. Anything that we can do to help support the community and let them know what's out there for people, that's what it's all about. Definitely, Sarah. We were just saying that, yeah. weren't we, about sharing, you know, just, yeah, get, getting stuff out there, basically. <laughs> what, I, what I'm going to quickly plug myself, and I've got £30 in order to raise my goal of £100 for the Hartlepool Carers 
UC 25 challenge. So if you look me up on Just Given, I just need £30 and then I've got my goal complete. Oh, thank you so much. Mine's 25 runs in 25 days. But I realised that actually when I haven't done any running for the last six months that it was a bit sort of over ambitious. So it is, there is a few walks in there. Um, yeah. I must admit, so if people don't mind, I'm doing like three runs and then a walk because my legs are absolutely dropping off. It's um, hard, isn't it? I did Red January where you do run every day of January. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hoping to come out fitter and for a good cause. So if anybody wants to do their own thing as well, they're welcome to set one up on the Sarah. Yeah, definitely. You can find all the information on our Facebook pages. You can set up your own challenges um, or you can join in with ours. Like I said, we've got slots I've got still the 9, 10 and 11 p.m. slots to fill. So if anyone wants to just jump on hours and do an hour of exercise, give me a shout. Thanks very much, Sarah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, next, we've got Michelle. Well, my name is Michelle Horsfall. I'm a community and diversity officer within the engagement team for Cleveland Police. So... I started in role last March, so nearly a year now, but it's pretty much been locked down the whole time. Um, the team consists of two PCs, two PCSOs and a sergeant, and then there's another community diversity officer alongside myself. So we all lead on different things and different areas as well, but Hartlepool is one of my areas and so is a lot of income communities. So being a part of this group is just perfect for what I do and what I'm interested in. Um, the team's quite new, so we get to be quite creative. We can agile work, attend drop-ins, usually uh, post-lockdown. We like to do things like community conversations, which has been hindered, obviously, with COVID. But we can offer training and workshops. And although we'd normally do these in person, we can do them virtually as well. Um, so we're able to meet the needs of the community, but also we can link in internally with the police and the structures within the police. So if the community feels as though they're not getting served in their best way, if they highlight that to myself or my colleague Catherine, we can take that knowledge into the police and make sure those needs are addressed. Um, currently, my main focus is uh, World Day of Social Justice, which is coming up on the 20th of February. Um, I'm going to be a part of the Hartlepool Action Lab conversation with Darren. So talking about the shared language around poverty and I'm hoping that some ideas out of that I'll be able to put across on our social media on the 20th of Feb um, and also there's a page online uh, by the UN and it's just talking about closing the inequalities gap to achieve social justice so talking about how we coexist and I think especially at times of lockdown it's been more apparent than ever the socio-economic gaps and technological gaps between people so I'm hoping that this day We'll highlight that a bit and also it's lgbt history month so um i mean i'm flying the rainbow right now <laughs> but yeah so we just get involved we have like um an equality and diversity calendar so any events that are coming up we can promote and share and try get involved with so yeah i've shared my contact details please feel free to contact me and invite me to anything and everything that is possible at this time and something that you said in previous meetings, Michelle, that has really struck me is that where there is reporting of crime that people aren't comfortable themselves reporting on, you will be happy to facilitate that to ensure it gets into the system, but the reporter remaining completely anonymous. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So um, we do a lot around hate crime as well. Um, the main ethos and idea behind our team was to work with communities that face barriers to reporting and so they may not want to go the mainstream routes so instead of for example ringing the police or going into a police station you could come to us where the non-uniformed kind of in-between person um, we can support you to report online or you can report directly to us you can also report in your own language online so if English is not your first language you can report or and we advocate for people to be able to use the phone lines and ask for translators and I guess just filling the gaps that people don't know these services exist and we also push the complaints procedure as well so if you feel like you've not had a fair service from the police please let us know and we can feed this back in without these numbers and these statistics and these complaints 
change cannot happen. So it's really important that we link in with communities and build that rapport and trust so that people feel like change can happen and they get the service that they need. Guys, um, oh. I haven't got too much to add from what Darren had said, other than um, as well as the cohesion worker, um, they will be my job coming up. So I am on to Pastures New but at the end of the month. Um, I'm heading off to work for a charity in Middlesbrough. So my role will be coming up. Um, but we, we're just working on the recruitment um, processes at the moment. Um, so that will be a really fab opportunity for, for someone. Um, I've absolutely loved working with you all. Um, it's been great. So it's it's a fab job. It's I'm it's literally just I'm doing going to be doing something quite similar. It's just running a different program. Um, so yeah, so that's really exciting. Um, the other thing is we've also been working with probation for quite a while now on helping them with those who aren't kind of getting involved with probation when they're meant to. So either going off the radar and getting to the point where they're getting breached. So we're kind of stepping in to help navigate people through services and by doing that, helping them reconnect with probation. So we're, we're currently working with those guys to get a service level agreement put in place, which is really positive um, and something that mm -hmm. hasn't been done far, I don't think, in this way. Um, and probation are really keen on the way we work and the way we interact with people. And we're finding that it's causing less breaches and people who were never engaged before or really, really, really struggling with probation um, and now engaging a lot more, like I say, causing less breaches and they're actually getting the help that they need, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, that, that's my kind of little input. That was sweet. sweet. <laughs> it wasn't a little input, Sarah, ab absolutely amazing. That's really, really good to hear that. And to, we look forward to sort of how things unfold around your work with the probation as well. It'd be, it'd be really good to hear some more yeah right brilliant um because they are public so they will go on to our mailing list which goes to a gang of people but then also on to our website which kind of is a public place where people can pick them up but we just think that's the best way in order to get that information out to as many as possible we're not precious we don't want to keep it we want the whole world to know as much as possible about what you what what you guys are doing, what great work you're doing. And um, as well as that, you've just reminded me of, Darren, is it, am I gonna get it right? Never more needed. Yeah, never more needed. That's the, that's the uh, thing. Yeah. We should be working towards something for the end of February called never more needed. I mean, it is kind of a, it's a demonstration of how important voluntary sector organisations are in the country, especially at this point in time. And we will be looking for contributions around that because there's there's something with a hashtag right now and then sort of a definition of the support that I know that you're all out there given. And it's kind of, a, as I said, a, a, a UK wide recognition, but also a little bit of a push to, um, to recognise that on a on um, a, a government level as well to kind of get that support into sort of the community and, and to pick that up. And, and finally, finally, um, a seed. Um, you'll, you'll be aware probably that, that in November, the UK hosts um, the uh, COP26, I think it's called, which is a gathering of all the world's nations asking themselves, how the hell are we going to stop climate change and move to a much more sustainable way of living? So we just wondered whether we should begin to think about what we might do in November that might tie together a lot of the work that people are already involved in, because, of course, sustainability is also integrally about social justice. So it's just a seed. If anybody is at all inspired by that or, or even mildly interested, would do, um, then um, get in touch and we'll, we'll see whether we might have some momentum for doing something for Hartlepool, with Hartlepool in whatever form, for November to coincide with, with COP26.